And balloons filled with the air that we breathe support the weight of a person. All right, everybody, what happens if you stand on the balloons you're holding in your hands right now? It'll pop. It'll pop? Explosion. Explosion? Boom. Boom? Stretch. Stretch. Very good. Let's try it. Everybody put your balloon on the ground. And then on the count of three, stand on your balloon with both feet. Y'all you popped your balloons. Why'd you do that? Because you put all your weight down on the balloon, and the balloon wasn't going to be able to support your weight. So of course, eventually, your weight put enough pressure on the balloon that the sides of the balloon failed, and all the air went out this way. Now, what happens if we distributed all of your weight evenly over the balloons? Do you think they would still pop? Hopefully, they won't pop. Uh, we might be killing more balloons. All right. Are you guys ready to give it a shot? Sure. Absolutely. All right, come around to the other side here. All right. And can we bring in the table? Our balloons are boxed in on a three by six foot sheet of plywood, and on top, an inverted table rests directly on the balloons. Now it's time for our volunteers to test the strength of these balloons. All right, Riley, go ahead and step up. Justin? Mike? All right, Tony. So why does this work? The table is the key. It distributes the combined weight of over 600 pounds across all the balloons. And even though it's a small surface area, just three by six feet, the balloons can handle the small fraction of the weight that each must bear. For me, it feels surprisingly sturdy and good. I feel supported. The balloons and the air in between them form a closed system, with the air behaving as a fluid. Fluids in a closed system follow something called Pascal's Law, which says when an outside force is applied to one surface of the closed system, the entire system experiences the same pressure. In this case, the air spreads the pressure around, allowing all portions of the balloons to carry the load, not just the areas directly in contact. Well, should we try bouncing? So on the count of three, we'll do one, two, three, and everybody jump. Okay. And we'll see what happens. Are you guys ready? Hey. Ah, there you go. Keep jumping. Ah. <laughs> the elasticity of the balloons is at about 16 pounds per square inch. So when the bouncing increases the force on them beyond their elasticity, they burst. If we'd left a little more room in the balloons, they could have had a few more jumps. Still, the air supports almost 600 pounds before adding the jumping force, which causes the balloons to burst. As you can see in the slumbo, when the weight hits these balloons, they really stretch out. Not too bad, not too bad. The balloon experiment, by far the most fun, super interactive. Popping balloons is always fun. It's like blowing bubbles in soda, it never gets old. You all had to put an awful lot of force down onto that surface to even pop those balloons, and you had to shift your weight around and really, really work at it to make yeah. them pop. What did you guys think? It was fun. The once fragile balloon, a simple thin bag of air, can hold all of your weight as long as we distribute it nice and evenly amongst a crowd of balloons. But how much do you trust this invisible force? I've got a more extreme demonstration to show how the distribution of weight affects pressure. All right, everybody, uh, I have something else to show you. I have a nail here, Ken. Could you examine that and make sure that it's a real nail? It's a real nail. Excellent, so I'm going to just further prove that. I'm gonna nail it right in to this piece of wood here. There it is. Okay, uh, I also have an apple. Now, is this firmer or less firm than human flesh, would you say? Firmer. Firmer, okay. So I'm gonna take another nail, and I'm gonna give this not too much force. Whoa, not too bad. The shot of the nail going into the apple, it looked like it was just a heart getting penetrated and then, like, apple juice was spewing everywhere. If I were to kind of like leave this flat standing up like that, and you were to step on it with your human foot, which is less firm than an apple, what would happen to the nail? It would puncture my foot. It would puncture your foot. Yes, sir. All right. 
Everybody in agreement? Yes. yes. All right, let me show you something. I have something uh, to show you. good old-fashioned bed of nails. But can this bed of nails display the same properties the balloons do? Can the nails support a human if we distribute the weight correctly? I see that. And again, these are real nails, so. Whoa. Oh, that's sharp. Oh. Darren catches the action in slow motion. If these nails are sharp enough to pierce the skin of an apple, are they sharp enough to pierce human skin? Our engineer, Nick Householder, is willing to find out. Go ahead and lie down, flat on your back. Ugh. All right, now, uh, what do you all think is going to happen when we bring those nails back up? I think Nick's a dead man. There's a hospital right around the corner. I appreciate that. Nick, are you ready? I guess so. Just lay it nice and flat. <laughs> I'm OK, Kevin. A little pokey, but not bad. It's very yeah. relaxing. I feel like I could sleep here. Yeah, exactly. It's all right. So if Nick were to step on a single nail, all of his weight going down on one nail point, of course it would go through his foot. But since he's evenly distributing his weight over lots of little points of nails, each one has to hold up just a fraction of his weight, and he doesn't feel it at all, or just a little bit. Pressure is simply the application of force over a particular surface area. With more force comes more pressure. But when we increase the surface area, we get less pressure. I'm OK, Kevin. I'm alive. For now. <laughs> what does that mean? We got other stuff to do today. <laughs> and by later, I mean right now. Should we add more weight? Oh, oh, yeah. Of course oh, we yeah. should. Bring more, in the weight. More weight? Yeah, that's right. Don't Why move. More Don't move. Don't move. You'll regret it. Why not? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> What's first? Uh, let's start small. How about a cinder block? Cinder block? Wait, whoa, whoa. Our build team has prepared a variety of random household objects of varying weight, and I do mean random. Brave man right there. Our plan is to keep stacking them all on Nick until he starts crying, or we run out of stuff. What do the numbers mean? They mean how many pounds of weight they are. Okay. So like 10 pounds of sugar, 28 pounds of cinder block, 12 pounds of kettlebell. What the? the... Whoa, that hurts me. <laughs> Who brings oranges, Kevin? Oh, that's all I had. I ran out of apples. <laughs> In total, Nick is sandwiched between 4,500 nails and 67 pounds of random items. How you feeling, buddy? I'm actually pretty all right. It's not too heavy. What do the nails feel like in your back? It's a bunch of small points all kind of all over my back. If it makes you feel any better, my thumb's getting tired from holding this button down. <laughs> I feel for you and that sore thumb of yours. Well, it's not sore, it's just tired. <laughs> so no matter how much weight we add, Nick is going to be fine as long as we keep that weight evenly distributed. You should be fine, Nick, right? I am fine. I'm a little upset that you had oranges and he used me instead. Don't worry, I'll <laughs> share the oranges with you. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank now, you. Uh, Thank you. Let's go get some coffee. All right. Sounds good. Kevin? Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, don't, you can't leave me. <laughs> Kevin, you can't leave me here. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리